So every morning, this part of the bed is in the shade because the sun's over there, right? And uh, every evening, that part of the bed's in the shade because uh, the sun's over there. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's around, uh, you know, the uh, later part of July. And this is the time of year that I start planting fall crops, certain kinds. And I recently had a viewer ask me, you know, when do you plant fall crops? What should you plant? <laughs> what fall crops do you plant? Um, so that's a good question. And like a lot of questions, uh, it depends. <laughs> it re really depends. The most important thing would be when, when is your fall? I mean, we, we all have a date, the fall equinox, right? Um, but what's most important is, I mean, the fall, the, the, the time from how long you have before the fall equinox matters because that's going to tell you how long you have before you start losing hours of sunlight per day and when it starts to cool off. It's also important to bear in mind where you are um, when you start getting frost uh, overnight because uh, even though there's plants that are cold hardy and can handle some frost, um, that their rate of growth might slow down when you start getting frost. So you want to plant something that it's, it's reached most of its, achieved most of its size before the frost hits you. Number one, you, you want to plant a cold hardy thing because it's just going to get cold, you know, like it's going to continue to be warm for about a month, but then it's starting to get, it's going to start to get colder and colder and colder. Um, so you want a plant that's going to be cold tolerant. Um, but you also need a plant that's going to, you know, sort of reach a certain size before it starts getting cold and the soil cools down and the nighttime air cools down and the sunlight length of, length of day starts decreasing. Um, you know, the rate of growth really starts to uh, slow down. So, roundabout way of answering the question. Um, but for me, I know that I've got, let's say, 30 good days of heat left, maybe a bit more. I've got another 30 days of reasonable sun, reasonably warm, but not too bad. And then it's sort of very marginal after that without putting a lot of effort into things, getting, you know, cold frames and stuff set up and so on and so forth. But the days are just getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So, you know, I got about 60 days. So for me, I would plan something that would have days to maturity, 30 days, 40 days, 50 days max, right? And something that's cold tolerant. And uh, it's an ideal time to plant things that are prone to bolting. So, I mean, we plant things like spinach in uh, September, or uh, sorry, we plant spinach in April or even late March sometimes if I can get them on the soil under a, a you know, sort of dome, uh, you know, some sort of artificial microclimate. Um, sometimes in March I can get spinach to germinate. But uh, April, May, June, we get a few hot days in June, it bolts. Right, so spinach doesn't mind the cold, but it can't stand the heat. It's an ideal to thing to plant because uh, once it reaches a certain height, it can't take any heat at all. It'll bolt. So if you plant it now and you can get it to grow, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you got, you gotta, uh, you gotta baby it along a little bit because it's it's so hot and so dry this time of year. You risk the, risk the seedlings drying out, not having enough water. So. You know, you, in the spring, you stick a seed in the ground and it grows because it's kind of like the rainy season, right? It's an ideal time to sow seeds because, you know, it rains fairly often and uh, you're not at risk of soils drying out. Um, this time of year, end of July, early August, everything's dry as a bone. So you, there's things you have to do to, uh, you know, keep the soil from drying out. Unless you've got like a, you know, a string of days coming where it's going to be overcast and rainy. If you're lucky enough to have that occur in July or August, I don't know if you can tell from the weather right now, but we've kind of had something like that here, although we're not getting good rains, we're just getting a lot of fog right now. Um, but yeah, the good thing about growing something like a spinach or a lettuce, those are two plants that are very prone to bolting, is that if you can get them established, they're probably not going to bolt in late September, early October, because it's not sunny enough, not hot enough, right? So their lettuce and spinach are an ideal crop to plant for a fall crop, and you plant them about now, right? For me, anyway. It really depends on how, how soon your fall gets cold. You gotta 
when's your you know first you know when's the first frost happen um, in in the fall it really depends on where you are but you know people might say plant radishes well how many how many damn radishes are you going to eat <laughs> right? plant something you're going to eat I like arugula but my wife is the you know my wife has a salad every day for lunch I don't I tend to eat the leftovers right like a lot of you fellows know what I'm talking about so you don't want to see that go to waste so you're having the leftovers right but my wife likes to have a nice salad every day for lunch so but she doesn't really like arugula I mean she'll add it to a salad but it, it's, it can't be like the base thing right she likes lettuce spinach um, certain varieties of kale but not the variety I grow <laughs> kind of like more like baby kale and that sort of stuff um, so uh, there's no point in me plant even though arugula grows quickly and it's a good fall crop there's no point in me planting it because I'll just have a whole bunch of arugula that neither my wife nor I or nor my kids really want to eat that much I don't mind it um, but it's kind of a salad green and you know it's there's only so much arugula salad you can eat right? <laughs> so, so plant something you like uh, for me we, you know we like lettuce we like spinach there's you know, there's other greens that are quick growing like that too but you know it, it really comes down to there's um what's that called that's tokyo silky sweet uh, different kinds of um there are some plants in the crucifer or the brassica family and that that sort of cabbage turnip family that grow really fast that have nice greens um, for me a fall crop is is a green of some kind right? a fast growing green and another good indication of when to plant them, aside from just the number of days, you know, you've got to work with. Um, for me, when you start harvesting your first potatoes, um, that's um, about, you know, if you, if, you plant, if you planted your potatoes as early as you could, if you planted a bed of potatoes as early as it could possibly go in the ground in the spring, when those potatoes come out, it um, tends to be the right time to plant lettuce or spinach, those fast growing greens. Um, and the great thing is you've pulled all the potatoes out of the bed. So you've got an empty bed just waiting, just begging to have something planted in it, right? And uh, potatoes aren't the heaviest feeders in the world. So it's, it's a good thing to follow it with. So that's another good trick. Pull your potatoes out and just, you know, if you've got any leftover lettuce seeds, there was one year I bought one of these giant packs of lettuce. And so I would pull the potatoes out and I'd just throw the lettuce seeds on, on the soil and just sort of muss it up a little bit with my hands and water it and just leave it. <laughs> Maybe put a little bit of, you know, I'd put a little bit of grass on top just to keep the soil from drying out. And the lettuce would just come up through the grass like a weed. Uh, maybe I'll try that this year. If I'm going to, you know, all these things, if you're going to do it, you got to do it, you know. If I'm going to plant a fall crop, it's about time to do it now. I have planted, I'll show you a little thing I got over here. I have planted some uh, lettuce and spinach in an odd sort of place that makes perfect sense if you follow my logic. Um, but uh, yeah, let me just show you. It makes the most sense to just show you. Let's have a look here. All right, so right here, right here I've got a uh, cucumber garden and the cucumbers are doing good. They're maybe four feet high, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, they need to be, um, you know, you constantly have to amend them a little bit and, you know, help them climb the trellis. Uh, but these will be like eight feet high by the time they stop. So every morning, this part of the bed is in the shade because the sun's over there, right? And uh, every evening, that part of the bed's in the shade because uh, the sun's over there. So here we've got a bed where these plants are getting sun all day long, but one side or the other is only getting half a day of sun, which is just what lettuce and spinach want. So I've got spinach growing here and it's kind of in the shade. And I've got lettuce on the other side. Now I'll bring the camera in and show you a little bit better. Um, but these are gonna continue to get higher and higher for the next month. And then around, oh, end of August, September, these are gonna start to give up. And I'll just cut them down to let the sun through. Because by then, um, you know, the, the days will have changed a little bit and I really want all the sun, but by then the roots will be very well established on these plants. I mean, right now I want them in the shade a bit. It's, it's plenty warm, so the seed will germinate, but I don't want the soil drying out because these plants want constant moisture. Um, but by the time the roots get really well established um, and the 
days, you know, the, number, the, the length of days gone down a little bit, and I want these to do a lot of growing, right? These cucumbers will be will be done, and I can just sort of cut these down, let them just be in a heap down here, sort of thing, and let the sun in, and by then the roots will be really well established, and they'll be able to find their water deep in the ground, and I can get spinach. So let me just show you a little bit uh, closer. So yeah, here's a spinach. That's about the height here. I, I might have planted these. A week ago, a week and a half ago, right? And they're starting to grow. And I, I watered them the day I planted them, and I, believe it or not, I haven't watered them yet. And uh, yes, we did get a good rain a number of days ago, um, but a good part of the reason why the soil has retained its moisture is because it's it's in the shade of these, right? It's not getting all the sun all day long. It's getting some of the sun, some of the day. Here we are on the other side, and I've got these little teeny tiny spin uh, lettuce growing here, right? Uh, early beginnings, but they'll continue to grow, and uh, I'll have some lettuce, lettuce later on. So you can see them all right there. And you know, all these these uh, stems that are starting trying to reach into where I've got these, I got I got them you know, work them up into the lattice work. It's just something I, every couple days I come out here and just anything that's not where it's supposed to be, I, I fish it up through the, through the mesh there, right? I want the plant being vertical and the plant wants to be horizontal, <laughs> but it'll grow just fine. Um, but yeah, that's the trick. And I guess it also bears mentioning like there's more than one kind of fall crop, right? So I've got, um, you know, this kale, and actually, this this kale came up came up wild. It came up in a clump over there, and I I pulled them out and repositioned them, and and they're doing pretty good kale. I didn't even plant these; they just happened. I just moved them so that they'd have the right amount of space, right? <laughs> so that's wonderful when that happens. Um, but I consider these a fall crop, even though they they started growing in April. Um, you just keep taking every time I want kale, I take a couple leaves off each plant until I got enough for a you know, a nice side dish with a meal. And uh, these will just keep producing and producing and producing and producing. And I'm harvesting my, us usually uh, around sometime in December, I take everything I've got left. And, uh, you know, I'm constantly harvesting this. I'm constantly freezing it and putting it down, right? I'm just always getting kale all season long. So it's, it's, a, it's a spring crop, it's a summer crop, it's a fall crop. It's just a wonderful thing to, to grow and it freezes really well. You just blanch it and freeze it. It's just great stuff. Anyway, that's my take on fall crops. It depends on what you like to eat and how soon your first frost date uh, comes along, uh, how warm your fall is, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, your growing zone to some extent, but growing zone just tells you how cold your winter's gonna get. It doesn't tell you how soon the winter comes. So it really depends on where you are. And you know, if you're aware from season to season, really how much t time you got to work with, um, figure out that many days and whatever you want to grow. If it's got that many days to maturity, it's going to work. I would focus on greens. I would focus on cold hardy greens that can take a frost because you know, whatever you're growing is probably going to be growing into that frost zone. So it's good if they can withstand a little bit of that. You don't have to worry about it. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, maritimegardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for